Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to 3D Now. My name is Jack and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a CAD model in Fusion 360. So hopping right into the video, if you guys like 3D printing and technology videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell really quick to get notified when I post a new video. So I get asked all the time what CAD modeling software I use to make my 3D models. So I asked on my community tab on the YouTube channel what you guys wanted to see a tutorial series about. I mean, I got over a hundred votes here and Fusion 360 was the winner by far with 56% of the votes. So I usually use Autodesk Inventor, but they're made by the same company and Fusion, and Fusion 360 has a lot of the same features. So right now I'm starting a series on tutorials with Fusion 360 to show all of you guys how to make 3D models to use with your 3D printers or other applications. So make sure to stay tuned for future videos. First, we're going to be talking about how to install Fusion 360 and the environment in, in Fusion and how to make basic sketches and basic 3D models. So, of course, the first thing to do is go online and search Fusion 360. And there's going to be a, a lot of links that pop up. But the one you want to click on is right here, the free software for students and educators. And Fusion 360 is free if you're not using it commercially. So if you are a hobbyist, if you're a student, if you're an educator or any academic institution, basically not for commercial purposes, you can get a free three year license, which is awesome. So make, so make an account real quick, or if you have one, you can just sign in and download Fusion 360 on your computer. It works on Mac and Windows, which is awesome. So once you have this installed, you can find it on your desktop and open it up. So Fusion 360 is a more simplified version of Autodesk Inventor Pro, which is like a full scale mechanical engineering modeling software. But Fusion is made for making really smaller parts and smaller assemblies, which is perfect for 3D printing and CAD modeling for beginners. So once it opens up, you're gonna see a prompt here to sign in with your Autodesk account. So make sure to do that right away. So once we have signed in, it's going to log you in to your Autodesk account and Fusion is awesome because all of your models are saved to your account. So you can actually share them with other people and access all your models from different computers because, because Autodesk saves them to your account in the cloud and you can make a model on one computer and go to another one and still be able to have access and edit the same exact model, which is super cool. So this is the first thing you see you, when you install Fusion 360. This is, this is your basic environment for CAD modeling. So up here we have our files. You can see this is our file right here, untitled. And we can add new ones here as well. Over here we have our show data panel, which shows all of our models on our account. We can click on them, view them, and edit them as well. If we exit out of that, we have our main window here. Up top we have all of our tools to make our model with. Over here, we have our browser, which we can collapse or expand. And this shows all of the parts of our model and environment. Right here, we have all the, the origin, the planes, and everything. And once we create sketches and bodies, it'll show up here in the browser. Over here on the right, we have the view cube. You can rotate that to rotate around the environment or around your 3D model. On the bottom, we have some tools to view your model. We can pan, we can orbit, we can look at, we can zoom in, stuff like that. On the bottom here, we have our timeline. So it'll show all the steps we, we have done to create our 3D model. So the first thing with modeling in Fusion 360 is to make a two-dimensional or 2D sketch to build off of. So we're basically gonna draw a sketch of a face of our model on a 2D piece of paper and then extrude it off the paper into three dimensions. So we're gonna go up here in the left-hand corner and click Create Sketch. We can pick which plane we wanna start out with. So I'm gonna go right here and click the bottom one, and it's going to move the view to this flat view so we can edit on a flat two-dimensional area. And you can see here on the right-hand side, our sketch palette pops up with a bunch of tools that we can use, which is awesome. So, we can go up here into the sketch area, click the drop down right here. We have all of our tools when sketching. So the most used tool is going to be the line tool. You can click that and now your cursor will have this little icon on it. 
you can snap it to any point on the grid here or you just go from the origin click and then you're going to pull out and you're going to see a line being drawn so if i wanted to draw a line right here on, on the right hand side it's going to snap to that place and we can actually just type in any dimension that we want so i'm going to type in one inch click enter and it's going to make that line exactly one inch but i have it here in millimeters if you click on that it'll actually show up as one inch again but it automatically automatically converted to millimeters it would actually be better to just use millimeters for now so you can do let's let's do 220 millimeters and there we go it'll show up here and the cool thing about fusion 360 is that, is that you can actually do math in in the input box which is super cool so say i wanted to do parentheses 45 minus 20 and take out the millimeters here and click enter and it'll do the math for me which is super cool so if you have a big complex sketch you can actually do math in that input box and it'll show up correctly which is super cool right click okay so another tip is that when you're editing a sketch or something else to get out of it you can right click and okay or right click and cancel so in here we have one line i can click that if i click one of the the uh, points on it i cannot move it because it because it's constrained to the origin you, you can see here if i hover over it there's a constraint here all the constraints over here we have we have a coincident constraint over here to the origin and a parallel constraint here to the x-axis which means that that it won't move so so for example if i click over here sketch line if i create a line just in random places go here to here right click okay so it's going to be blue and i can move it around in 2d space because it's not constrained anywhere so say i wanted to constrain this line right here to this line in a parallel orientation so i can go over here to my constraints click on parallel click on our line here click on the line here there we go and now you can see two lines here on both ends which means they're now parallel to each other so we can move it around but it'll still be parallel to the line which we applied it to so say now i want to put this line on the edge of this point so i can go over here to the coincident click on it click right here click right there and now these two lines are right next to each other now you can see here our line is black which means it's fully constrained and won't move anywhere which is pretty cool some other cool things in sketches if you go down here are rectangles we can create a two-point rectangle or a center rectangle uh, i like the center one because you can create it symmetrically in the origin again click on your center drag out and you can see here a box showing up and you can edit the width and height by just typing in you can see here the blue at the bottom i'll put in 50 millimeters and then and then go to the next dimension you click tab and then you can do let's do 60 millimeters and then enter and now we see we have a box here which is fully constrained because it's black we can't move it around at all and we have dimensions here too so we can actually drag these back and forth and move them around and these are the dimensions from from the top and bottom and then from left and right which is the height and width of the box so say i wanted to change the height of this box i can double click here open it up and change this one dimension let's go 70 click enter and it'll automatically adjust symmetrically because we started it from the origin so so this whole box is constrained to the origin here super cool some other cool things we can do so i'm gonna delete this line first just click it and delete we can go to sketch and say we want to do a circle we can create a diameter circle again start here center drag out say i want to make it 30 millimeters in diameter enter enter there we go and we have a circle here that's fully constrained because, it, because, it, because it's black but some other cool things are offset and you can see the descriptions of them on the right 
click on it so you want it to make an offset of this box i click on the box and i can just drag out or in to make an offset of of, of, of this feature here of the sketch so you can see here this is the, the dimensions so i'll make it six millimeters click enter and i have an offset of our box you can see here i can actually double, I, can, I can edit it again with this dimension here so once i have a sketch created that i that i like i can go ahead and click stop sketch as you can see here now it is it is in our 3d environment but it's still 2d if we grab our our view cube and move it around we can see that it's still a two-dimensional object but we're going for a three-dimensional object to 3d print or, or do something else with so in order to do that we need to extrude this 2d sketch into a three-dimensional object so we can go over here to the top and under the under the create area and click the extrude button we can pick a face that, that, that we want to extrude i'm going to do this outer ring here click on that you can either drag this here or just the distance over here but i'm just going to drag you can see here now it's creating a three-dimensional object so 60 millimeters i will click ok and now we can, we can use our view cube to rotate around and see we have a, a three-dimensional model so you might be wondering where our sketch went so when you extrude a model from a sketch the sketch is actually going to disappear but you can get it back by going into our browser over here and going to sketches you can see here sketch 2 is our is our is our base sketch and the light bulb was turned off but if you click it it'll actually come back and we can click on it again we can actually edit edit the name of our sketch so i'll create i'll name it base click enter and we can see that this is our base sketch so if we wanted to extrude say the center hole as well we can either create another extrude or we can go over here down here into our uh, timeline and this is our extrude here we can click on that right click and edit feature we can actually go back in time and add a second extrude to our first one we can go over here and make sure our profile is selected we can, we can also add the center one as well so now we have the ring and the center extrusion select as well click ok and now we have these two extruded out and if we want to make our, our uh, base sketch disappear again, we can click on the light bulb and it'll turn it off, just like that. So now we have our three-dimensional model. So when you have a model that you like, you want to save it. So there's multiple ways you can do it. The, the easiest is to go up here and click the save icon. It'll ask you for a name. I'm going to name this tutorial. And it's going to save in location my first project and master which is a default, I'm going to click save, and I can see up here, it's tutorial v0, which means version 0. So every time I save it, it's going to iterate into, into a new version. So, so this is just the first video of a series of videos on Fusion 360. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions or comments at all, please, please leave them down in the comment section below. Make sure to look out for new videos on Fusion 360. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more 3D printing videos like this and technology videos and hit the notification icon. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. And I will see you guys in the next video.